Let us imagine you decide to take a vacation to peruse the lovely museums in the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. There, you decide to make a stop at the National Gallery Museum of Art, the iconic neoclassical structure with walls adorned with an arresting array of impressionist paintings. Indeed, rich, vibrant hues of Monet's gardens contrast sharply with the moody, introspective blues of Van Gogh's nocturnes. Nearby, the stark, bold contours of modernist sculptures command your attention, their abstract forms casting dramatic shadows on the polished floors. As you meander through the echoing galleries, absorbed by the rich hues of impressionist paintings and the stark contours of modernist sculptures, a subtle yet profound realisation might dawn. The art that surrounds you is steeped in the legacy of Rachel Bunny Mellon. Indeed, Bunny Mellon, born Rachel Lambert into the opulence of the Listerine mouthwash fortune, not only inherited a significant legacy, but also married into even greater prominence through her union with Paul Mellon, an heir to one of America's wealthiest banking fortunes. And this melding of wealth and taste crafted a patronage that was as quiet as it was impactful, shaping not just galleries, but the very landscape of American cultural heritage. In today's episode, we tell her story not merely as an heiress, but also as a curator of art, horticulture and elegance, as we describe Bunny Mellon, the last true old money heiress. Bunny Mellon, born Rachel Lambert Mellon, was a dazzling figure of American high society, flaunting a fortune that made even the most jaded plutocrats sit up and take notice. And with a net worth once pegged at a staggering $1 billion, her financial empire was built on a combination of inheritance and shrewd investments in Listerine, the mouthwash her grandfather invented. But it was a marriage to Paul Mellon, heir to the Mellon banking dynasty, that finally cemented her place at the pinnacle of the elite. And Mellon's life was a masterclass in luxury. For instance, her Virginia estate, Oak Spring Farm, was a sprawling 4,000 acres of pure extravagance, complete with gardens that bore her personal touch. Undoubtedly, this wasn't just any patch of green. It was a sprawling canvas of horticultural artistry that showcased her love for landscape design. Add to this a 27-acre jewel in Antigua, which she put on the market for a cool $14.5 million. Nestled within the exclusive Mill Reef Club, this property was as much a status symbol as it was a testament to her taste for the most elite real estate. Additionally, her jewellery collection was the stuff of legends, featuring glittering creations from Cartier and Verdura. Indeed, these weren't mere trinkets, but dazzling examples of her refined aesthetic and financial prowess. And yet, despite her vast fortune and luxury lifestyle, Bunny Mellon was anything but a typical socialite. She was famously private, shunning the limelight in favour of her passions. Certainly, her elegance and simplicity were her trademarks with a focus on gardening and art, rather than the superficial glitter of high society events. For example, her most celebrated achievement was transforming the White House Rose Garden during the Kennedy administration, a contribution that secured her admiration in circles that appreciated genuine talent over celebrity. But how did a shy artist already born into wealth become connected to one of America's most illustrious old money banking dynasties? In the next chapter, we'll explain how it all began to get our answer. Rachel Lambert, Bunny Mellon, was born on the 9th of August 1910 in Princeton, New Jersey, into a life of extraordinary privilege. You see, her lineage included Gerard Barnes Lambert, a pivotal figure in transforming his father's invention, Listerine, into an iconic brand, and her grandfather Jordan Wheat Lambert, who initially created Listerine as a surgical antiseptic, Therefore, the Lambert family's affluence and influence, already cemented by the time of Bunny's birth, were foundational to her upbringing and future pursuits in horticulture, art and philanthropy. And Bunny's childhood unfolded within an environment filled with the trappings of wealth and the cultural elements that define the American elite. Her home in Princeton was more than just a residence. It was a showcase of her family's stature, complete with expansive gardens that hinted at Bunny's future passion. And her mother, Rachel Lowe, was instrumental in nurturing Bunny's appreciation for beauty and design from a tender age, influences that profoundly shaped her aesthetic sensibilities and her eventual foray into garden design and interior decoration. Yet despite the opulence that surrounded her, Bunny's early life was not devoid of personal trials. 
Her parents' marriage suffered under the strain of her father's business commitments, which frequently kept him away from home and was not a harmonious one. So Bunny, a naturally shy and reserved child, often found solace in the quieter corners of her life, developing a rich inner world fueled by her observations of the art and culture that her family revered. But her education was carefully curated to fit the mold of her family's elite status, with stints at prestigious institutions like Miss Fine's School in Princeton and the Foxcroft School in Middleburg, Virginia, complemented by private tutors who enriched her knowledge of the arts, literature, and particularly French culture. And her intellectual growth was particularly marked by the frequent trips to France with her mother, which exposed her to European garden traditions that would later be reflected in her own garden designs. The eventual divorce of her parents in 1933 and their subsequent remarriages introduced further complexities into Bunny's life, but also marked a period of significant personal growth. Yet the shifts in her family dynamics did little to deter her burgeoning interest in the arts and nature. Instead, possibly fueling her drive to carve out a distinct path that blended her love for natural beauty with her cultural leanings. As Bunny grew into a woman, her reserved nature and the elegance instilled in her from childhood would seamlessly merge with her burgeoning talents in garden design and the art. On a crisp autumn day, the 25th of November 1932, Rachel Lambert, later known to the world as Bunny Mellon, walked down the aisle of Trinity Church in Princeton, New Jersey, to marry Stacy Barcroft Lloyd Jr. Stacy hailed from the influential Lloyd family of Ardmore, Pennsylvania, celebrated members of Philadelphia's historical elite. And, as a businessman and horse breeder, with a fervor for yachting, Stacy matched Bunny in their shared affinities for high society and the equestrian arts. Despite their common interests, their union would not endure, culminating in a divorce in 1948. Within the span of their marriage, Bunny and Stacy welcomed two children into their lives, and their son, Stacy Barcroft Lloyd III, would carve a niche for himself as an antiquarian. Their daughter, Eliza Wynne Lloyd, pursued the creative callings of an artist, yet tragically, Eliza's promising journey was cut short when she succumbed to complications in 2008 from severe injuries sustained in a devastating accident in 2000 when a truck struck her in Manhattan, leaving her with a brain injury and paralysis. Throughout the tumultuous years of World War II, Stacy Lloyd Jr. embarked on a clandestine career with the Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS, the precursor to the Central Intelligence Agency, better known as the CIA. His wartime efforts were stationed across Europe in the Morale Operations Branch, specializing in psychological tactics designed to destabilize enemy morale. During this intense period, Lloyd shared accommodations with another OSS operative, Paul Mellon, who would later emerge not only as a fellow war veteran, but also a monumental figure in Lloyd's personal life. You see, following his separation from Bunny, Stacy saw his former wife and his wartime comrade, Paul Mellon, unite in matrimony on the 1st of May, 1948. This union turned a new leaf in Bunny's storied life, intertwining her path with one of America's most illustrious families. Paul Mellon was no stranger to prominence, as the son of Andrew W. Mellon, a famed financier and three-time US Treasury Secretary, he was steeped in wealth and cultural heritage. And as an ardent art collector, Paul found a kindred spirit in Bunny. Their marriage blossomed into a dynamic alliance focused on art collection, philanthropy, and their mutual love for horse breeding. The Mellons meticulously assembled an exceptional art collection, focusing on European masterpieces from the 18th and 19th centuries. This remarkable assemblage, numbering over a thousand pieces, underscored their profound devotion to the arts. Now their collection was adorned with works by some of history's most revered artists. Notable among these were Georges Seurat's The Lighthouse at Honfleur, a vibrant symbol of Seurat's unique pointillist technique, and Claude Monet's Woman with a Parasol, Madame Monet and Her Son, capturing the light and fleeting moments of impressionist beauty. Additionally, Paul Cézanne's boy in a red waistcoat and Mary Cassatt's little girl in a blue armchair showcased the Mellon's appreciation for both impressionist and post-impressionist movements enriching the breadth of their esteemed collection. Beyond French masterpieces, the Mellons also cherished significant British and American works, reflecting their eclectic taste across various art traditions. 
Their collection featured George Stubbs's white poodle in a punt, exemplifying Stubbs's precise depiction of animals, George Bellows, New York, a dynamic portrayal of early 20th century American life and Winslow Homer's The Dinner Horn, blowing the horn at seaside, a serene snapshot of rural American scenes. This interest in British art was especially pronounced, leading to an impressive array of British artworks. These, along with their other acquisitions, have significantly enriched the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts Mellon collection, ensuring the Mellon's legacy in the art world endures, celebrated for their discerning eye and passionate support of the arts, and their philanthropic endeavors included significant donations to prestigious institutions. Among these, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. benefited immensely. This gallery, originally founded through the generosity of Paul's father, Andrew Mellon, was enriched by their contributions. Furthermore, their legacy in the arts was solidified by the establishment of the Yale Center for British Art, further showcasing their dedication to fostering cultural enrichment. Beyond the canvases and sculptures, the Mellons were also avid enthusiasts of thoroughbred horse breeding and racing. Their most celebrated success came with their horse, Sea Hero, who clinched victory at the Kentucky Derby in 1993, and this achievement highlighted their dedication to maintaining and promoting equestrian traditions that they passionately upheld, and Bunny was particularly noted for her expertise in horticulture. Despite lacking formal training, she became an esteemed figure in gardening, largely self-educated through extensive reading and hands-on experience. Her horticultural journey began at Albemarle, her family's estate in Princeton, where she observed the Olmsted brothers' gardeners at work. Specifically, her designs were influenced by renowned French gardeners such as André Le Nôtre and Jean-Baptiste de la Quintigny, whose philosophies she admired and incorporated into her own work. Additionally, Bunny Mellon's skill extended to the landscapes of the Mellon's properties, including the French-inspired gardens at Oak Spring Farms. Her expertise in the field even led to a significant role during the Kennedy administration. You see, in 1961, at the request of President John F. Kennedy, she undertook the redesign of the White House Rose Garden. Her vision transformed it into a space more conducive to public ceremonies, integrating American plant species and enhancing its aesthetic and functional appeal. Her contributions continued beyond the Kennedy era. After the assassination of President Kennedy, Lady Bird Johnson requested her to proceed with her work on the White House grounds, which included the East Garden. Her efforts were a collaboration with Irvin Williams, who helped introduce magnolia trees to the garden, an endeavor that required creative maneuvering around bureaucratic obstacles. Rachel Mellon's legacy in landscape design also includes work for Jacqueline Kennedy's residences, Post White House, the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library, and River Farm, headquarters of the American Horticultural Society. Furthermore, her international influence reached France, where she contributed to landscape projects for notable figures like Hubert de Givenchy and participated in the restoration of historical gardens in Versailles. Together, Paul and Rachel Mellon's lives were a testament to their love for the arts, their respect for tradition and their commitment to philanthropy, leaving behind legacies that continue to influence and inspire. The Mellons, known for their profound generosity, also held a preference for quiet and discreet giving, a style that became a defining characteristic of their shared journey, an approach they maintained throughout their lives, and after the passing of her husband Paul on the 2nd of February 1999 in Upperville, Virginia, at the age of 91, Bunny Mellon sustained their legacy of contribution. In her later years, Rachel Lambert Bunny Mellon was as much known for her reclusive nature and immense influence in American high society as she was for her philanthropic efforts. Despite the personal sorrows that marked her later life, including the tragic accident of her daughter Eliza in 2000 and Eliza's subsequent death in 2008, Bunny maintained a robust constitution. She continued to swim regularly and cared for her gardens, though she gradually receded from public view as her health allowed. Controversy also touched Bunny's later years, particularly through her association with US Senator John Edwards during his 2008 presidential campaign. Bunny, drawn to Edwards due to his reminiscent charm of John F. Kennedy, contributed over $3.5 million to his campaign. 
However, it later emerged that some of these funds were diverted to conceal Edward's extramarital affair and the pregnancy that resulted. This misuse of her contributions left Bunny deeply disheartened, as she had expected the funds to be used solely for campaign purposes. Despite these challenges, Bunny continued to oversee her vast estate and her impressive collections of art and decorative objects. In 2014, just months before her death, Bunny chose to auction much of her collection through Sotheby's, raising nearly 159 million US dollars. These proceeds were directed to the Gerard B. Lambert Foundation, established in honor of her father, underscoring her continued commitment to philanthropy. As Bunny's life drew to a close, her health waned, hindered by cancer and macular degeneration, which significantly impaired her cherished gardening activities. Nonetheless, she remained active, adapting her lifestyle to manage her physical constraints while keeping her mind sharp. Bunny Mellon passed away at the venerable age of 103 on the 17th of March, 2014. She had spent her final days at her beloved Oak Spring Farms estate, largely away from the public eye. Even in seclusion, Bunny remained a captivating figure, revered not only for her societal connections, including the Kennedys, but also for her enduring contributions to the realms of art and horticulture. Her life, marked by both grandeur and the shadows of personal tragedy, continues to inspire curiosity and admiration. And now, we'd love to see you in the comments. Were you aware of Bunny Mellon's story and influence? We can't wait to hear from you, and thanks for joining us for another episode. Cheers. Until next time.